So we can thank TV for a lot of reasons. Star Trek, Farscape, Community, The Simpsons, Family Guy. But apparently we can now add to that list solving a 15-year-old cold case murder mystery situation. everyone it's me Steph the Alter Nerd your nerdy alternative and welcome to another dose of the Daily Nerd where I break down the true crime story of, of the day that's pretty much caught me eye and yes apparently we can actually thank TV for solving the Anita nuts and mystery of 15 years what the deuce happened? I'm going to break it all down for you. Before I do so, though, if you love true crime on the daily, served with a little bit of sass and a lot of gob, then I'm your girl for you. So before you do anything else, make sure that you subscribe to join our Alter Nerd tribe. Like, share, comment, all of that good stuff. And let's jump into it, shall we? So with that being said, let's go back right to the beginning. Back in 2017 when this all happened. So, unfortunately, Anita Knutson was unalive. But by who? Her father, former Boo Mayor Gordon Knutson, had gone to her apartment that day because over the weekend, the family had tried to reach her and she wasn't answering. And so they got extremely worried. And unfortunately, for good reason. So he literally had to bust into her locked apartment. The door was shut. He had to ram it open uh, to find her. At that point, she's unalive. She's on the floor. And oh my goodness, I won't wish that on my worst enemy uh, for a parent to see the child like that. Now, bear in mind, YouTube human reviewer, I'm only, only, only uh, doing a quick overview. I'm not using any descriptive language whatsoever or going right into the detail with it. However, Anita was found wearing a robe uh, and the affidavit does say that her personal electronics were all left in the room, suggesting that theft just was not a motive. Out of the window that goes because her purse, her money, electronics, anything that would have been stolen, let's say, uh, was basically still there and unfortunately looking at this the crime scene analyst said that at the time when her father found her body that she had been on alive for more than a day so firstly what a scene that would have been right you know father to ram into that room to find the daughter on the floor unalive more than a day like again like i say i've said it before and i'll say it again i won't wish that on my worst enemy for them to see their child like that it's just horrific right now let's be very clear here there's one salient piece of detail there that should have your ears pricked up what would that be in my mind well the father had to ram that door open. It was shut. Unless you had a key, you had to freaking ram it open. So for me, that means one of two things. Either A, Anita knew the person that did it, opened the door, let them in, thinking nothing of it. Or B, the person had a key and had access to that room. Either way, Anita must have known the person that did it right because again i come back to this point the father literally had to ram that door open it was shut so whoever did it did it walked out closed the door behind him like with the key shut it locked it done dusted right well an arrest has been made 15 years later so at the timing of this video yesterday wednesday the 16th of march 2022 a press conference was held minnow police announced the arrest of 34 year old nicole rice and who is nicole rice she was the roommate at the time of anita being unalived in making the announcement minnow police chief john clug said Although most of the detectives who worked the original scene in investigation have retired, 
we've not forgotten about this hit. The chief went on to say, Rice was always considered a person of interest. He did not go into further details, though, of the case or a motive. But it looks like they've caught the person that's done it. Now, Anita's story was featured uh, as a digital series back in 2015 uh, in Dateline's Cold Case Spotlight. Included an interview with a younger sister, Anna. Now, Anna Nutzman told Dateline that even though Anita was then living away from home, she was close to their tight-knit family. So, again, that adds more credence to the notion that over that weekend when the family were calling her and she wasn't responding back, well, she was part of a close-knit family. So, she would have always responded back if she's part of a close-knit family. And the fact that she didn't do so rang alarm bells. So, that gives you more context as to why they were worried over the weekend when she wasn't responding. It was like, what the douche, right? So she also, she also says that for some reason, it always seemed like no matter who she was talking to, she made them feel like the most important person in the world at that time. And sadly, Anna was only 15 years at the time when Anita was unalive. Now, the police chief... Um, in question that we've just mentioned here at the press conference, this is where TV comes into it, credited the TV show Cold Justice, which assists in unsolved cases like these with resources and experts in being able to solve the case. So literally, police chief has literally credited TV to help solve this 15-year-old cold case murder mystery situation with Anita Nutson. How cool is that? It's amazing, right? Um, Chief John Klug says there was never enough to arrest her, but I would always say she was a person of interest in this case. Uh, finally, my heart goes out to the family. I wish we could have solved this sooner, but at the same time, I'm glad to say we have the person responsible for the unaliven of Anita Nutson in custody. Uh, the chief did not go into details about the motive, uh, as we mentioned before, but as it stands at the moment, we know that she is in the Ward County Jail and she is charged with the unaliving of Anita. Now, this will be quite interesting to find out because what was the motive? Why, allegedly, why did Nicole Rice unalive Anita Nutson? Right? It, it, that, that's like a big, massive question mark. And over time, I suspect this will come to light and we will soon find out. Now, as of again, uh, the timing of this recording, which is Thursday the 17th of March, earlier on today, there was an update. Nicole Rice made her initial court appearance by video at the Ward County Courthouse. The judge set her bond at $120,000 cash or $250,000 surety bond. Uh, Nicole Rice will be back in court April 21st for a preliminary hearing and arraignment. I'll tell you something, unless she's a freaking gazillionaire, I don't think she'll be getting out of jail anytime soon. That's a pretty high bond. But to be fair, allegedly, she's gone away with unaliving someone for pretty much 15 years. Like, yeah, set that bond as high as you freaking well can at this stage. If there's enough evidence to literally say she freaking did it, yeah, keep her behind bars. Oh, my goodness. It just, how can someone, right, during a 15-year period be able to live with themselves with what they did? Like, like Nicole Rice, she was living her everyday life for 15 years after allegedly unaliving Anita Nutson, like, how do you get on with life when you do something like that to someone? 
I'm sorry, but you've got to be like a psychopath, a sociopath, in my opinion, conspiracy theory, whatever. Just not all there in the end to be able to live with yourself and just live a normal everyday life as if nothing had happened. Do you know what I mean? It, it, that's just nuts with a capital N as far as I'm concerned. And oh my goodness, if she did it, uh, well, Nicole Rice is a very, very good example of a freaking roommate from out. I'll tell you that right now. Uh, but, you know, very, very interesting to see the police chief actually crediting TV uh, for helping to solve uh, this particular case. I mean, it's not just TV these days uh, as, as a medium that's helping solve these cases. As we all know, the Gabby Petillo case, the internet was hugely instrumental in helping to solve that case. I mean, Red, White and Buffoon, shout out to you guys. They freaking found the van, which then led to Gabby Petillo's uh, body being found. Like, seriously, everything that's happening in terms of certain mediums, TV, internet, you know, it can be a force for good where these kind of cases actually get solved. And that's freaking, like, amazing uh, that that can happen at times. But in regards to this Anita Knutson mystery, what do you guys think after all that? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you haven't done so already and you love true crime in, on the daily, served with a little bit of sass and a lot of gob, uh, then make sure you subscribe to join our Alter Nerd tribe. Like, share, comment, all of that good stuff. And until the next time, you guys, laters.